everyone it's misty here welcome back to the scrapbookpal.com youtube channel today i have an adorable card for you featuring the magic messages stamp set from ron fawn along with some of their other goodies from their latest release so this card is a little bit more involved there are a lot of steps but it's actually fairly easy so i'm starting off with a piece of cardstock that measures three and a quarter by eight and a quarter and i have taped that down to the um, tonic easy clean mat and I am going from ink pad to a paper using one of the bubble stencils from the new Lawn Fawn um, stencil set and I am going from the top to the bottom so we're going to be making a card with some bubbles today which you know if you saw the thumbnail so once I've done that I'm going to bring in a embossing powder from my stash so um this is it's called a kaleidoscope i've had it for eons but the reason why i picked it is because it is very iridescent so once it's heated it has pinks and purples and um, blues glitters and to me that really reminded me of um bubbles because they're kind of iridescent they're kind of glowy if i had to do this card all over again i may have used clear You'll have to let me know in the comments down below um, once the card is done if you think you would use clear embossing powder or if you liked the glitter embossing powder. So once I do that and I clean up my little area, I'm going to go ahead and heat this with a heat tool. So I'm just going to melt the powder and then we're going to move on to some ink blending. For the ink blending, I'm going to go ahead and bring in my tumbled glass distress oxide ink. Um, I'm not doing any kind of special blending. I'm just adding some color to the paper. You could totally do this on colored cardstock and then skip this step. But I really wanted the look of um, a blended sky to give it a little bit more dimension um, other than just the bubbles. So you can see there on the top left, I kind of made a boo-boo. And that's okay. I'm going to cover it. <laughs> So don't be afraid to make mistakes. We can always cover them. Okay, so I am bringing in the stitched rainbow um, die set from Lawn Fawn, and I'm bringing in the adhesive sheets from Sizzix. I wanted to be able to do this rainbow without having to worry about a bunch of glue. So I absolutely love these adhesive sheets. So it's double-sided. So you put one down, and then you put your die on top of it, and it cuts through, and then it gives you a an adhesive um, area to adhere the rest of um, the die cuts. So I do this a lot if I have like um, words that are very delicate. I do this if I have um, things that are gonna be really, really small and I don't wanna have to mess around with glue. And so I take the opportunity to use these adhesive sheets a lot. So I'm cutting out some of the clouds using this die as well. Um, and this is just going through my die cutting machine and I end up cutting, I think, six clouds total. And here you can see my rainbow arches. So I'm doing the Rory G Biv minus purple because there's not enough room. And once I had those ran through the die cutting machine, then there you can see that I've peeled off the background paper for the adhesive. And now I can add my rainbow arches without um, having to deal with a bunch of liquid glue or like glue dots or something. Simple and easy. I do have a little bit left over, so I'm just going to use my scissors and kind of trim around that. Once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and bring in some acetate. So this is actually acetate from a um, eyeshadow palette. <laughs> An eyeshadow palette. So I'm just going to go ahead and stamp on this. And I am using the um, Stays On White, Opaque White ink for this. Um, the reason why I decided to use acetate was because I didn't want, I wanted them to be see-through. I wanted them to look like bubbles. Um, Lon Fawn, one of Lon Fawn's team members did a, a gorgeous card where she really put a lot of detail in her bubbles. Um, and that was absolutely gorgeous, but I wanted something that was a little bit easier. As for the stamping, I'm going to be stamping three of the mice and then also stamping the bubble wand. I stamped the bubble wand in white on the acetate because I wanted this bubble to be clear as well. 
Now I've brought in a scrap piece of yellow into my mini misty and I am stamping the hello sunshine. So I am using two of the colors um, from Gina K design that's in their summer um, ink cube set, which will be linked down below along with um, all the other supplies. I, I stamped this in yellow, orange, and black because I wasn't sure which one I wanted to go with. And I decided um, to go with the orange. So I'm going to do some Copic coloring here. In there, I was like, can I color on the acetate? And I was like, no, I don't like it. <laughs> so I used R46 for the bubble wand, and I'm using some warm grays for the mice. So simple, easy coloring. Um, the bottom of this one is going to be where it's darkest because he's going to be going towards the sun, so he'll be a little bit lighter on top, um, but not a whole lot of blending etc so just something that's really really simple i like to make sure that i add a lot of deep dark shadows and um, i just want to make sure that there's a lot of dimension now you could have colored these um, without all these steps you could have stamped this on um, colored paper like colored crunch stock and done some paper piecing that would also be cute um, you could use other coloring mediums rather than copics and just have fun with it. But yeah, I love, love, love. I, I love Copics. <laughs> I love coloring. I find it relaxing. I enjoy it. I turn on some YouTube videos and just get lost in creating. So really, really cute. So for the second mouse, he's going to be looking up to the left and the light is going to be coming from the left down. So that's why I left his face um, lighter than the rest of his body. And it's kind of the opposite for this last mouse. He is going to be facing um, a different direction. So behind him would be the darkest. So I'm going to go ahead and get all of these lined up and get them cut out again. And with my die cutting machine, I used the spring showers die set from Lawn Fawn to cut out the sun. And then I used a small circle die to cut out the hello sunshine. There is a die that coordinates with the magic messages, messages and I do have it, but it was just a little too big. I wanted this to um, look like it's the sun. So after I've die cut everything, I'm gonna go ahead and put everything in this little embellishment holder so I don't lose them, especially the clear pieces. <laughs> so like I mentioned, this was from an actual makeup palette. So like this was an eyeshadow palette and so it's a bit thicker than some of the regular acetate. So I found that I had to run that through my die cutting machine probably three or four times before it cut all the way through. So just be cognizant of that. And um, the other acetate I used was really thin, like um, projectors, um, papers. Do you know what I'm talking about? Am I dating myself? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> it's acetate, but like acetate you can print on is what I'm trying to say, I think. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and adhere this card layer to a card base that measures eight and a half by seven. And I've scored it, excuse me, scored it at three and a half. I like doing that. That way I don't have to mess with um, any kind of, you know, different measurements. This is just so easy and it fits in a business size envelope as well. So I went ahead and cut the rainbow in half and I'm adhering that to the card layer. And there you can see that I've covered up my little mistake. Initially, I thought I would bring in a frame, but then I decided I liked it without. So I cut out two and a half clouds for each of the ends of the rainbow. And I'm just deciding where I want them as far as a layout. And then I'm gonna be adhering them using glue dots. And um, the reason why I like to do glue dots like this instead of liquid glue is I move these around a lot and liquid glue would just get absolutely everywhere. <laughs> so I stuck with the glue dots. With glue dots, you can still manipulate it. You can still turn them around, etc. And then I adhered them both to the card base using liquid glue. And I'm going to use some liquid glue again for the sun. So initially I put the sun on the right hand side and I'm gonna go ahead and adhere the mice. So the one with the bubble wand is gonna be on the middle. So I put a glue dot on his bottom and then a dimensional um, on, his, on his head. So here I'm assembling the bubble wand 
Like I said, I wanted the bubble to be clear and it was easier to do it this way. And then to adhere this to the card, I'm gonna cut one of those foam squares in half and adhere each of the halves onto the back of it. And then we'll get this adhered to the card so it looks like he is blowing a bubble through a bubble wand. Fun fact, I actually have a picture of me where I'm about a year old where I'm holding a bubble wand. Um, and a lot of people are like, is that a mascara wand? I'm like, no, it's a bubble wand. <laughs> So I adhered the one little uh, mouse on the bottom and then here I decided to move the sun and I'm adhering this mouse to the top of the big bubble. And I'm gonna go ahead and adhere him using the liquid glue. I'm adding the glue just on his back, that way um, you can't really see it. And as far as these other bubbles, I'm trying to keep the glue where the white um, ink is. So you could use um, the matte medium. That would probably um, work for this as well. Um, but I find this Tombow Mono Liquid Glue to be really, really simple, really easy. And um, like I said, I used so little of it that you couldn't really see it. I really love how these bubbles turned out. Um, again, you could stamp them on white paper and color them. Um, if I were to remake this card or if I make another one and using these bubbles, I may um, use some Copic on the acetate or even use vellum. Vellum would be fun too. So the last step for me is to add some Nouveau Shimmer Pen because it's not a misty card if there's not some shimmer. And here you can see all the sparkle and shine, um, the different layers and textures on this card. And I really, really love it. I'm going to turn down my lights a little bit and bring this closer. You can see that embossing powder, how it is just iridescent and so pretty. So let me know again in the comments down below if you would have done um, this embossing powder or if you thought clear it would look better. So thank you so much for joining me. Again, all the supplies will be linked in the description box down below. I really appreciate you and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.